before you were saved and I was saved, we everything that we did was in the flesh. Amen. And most of the time when we do things in the flesh, it's wrong. <laughs> it gets us in trouble. When Jesus saves us, what happens? We become a, a child of God, but we also become, we're supposed to be spiritual people. Amen. You know, we make decisions now based on what the Lord wants us to do as opposed to what our flesh wants us to do. I hope that's the way you make your decisions, what the Lord would want you to do instead of what your flesh would have you to do. Amen? Amen. And uh, I was just sitting there thinking, boy, Jesus, you know, uh, their folks tonight uh, have burdens, broken hearts, tears, different things. You know what? Jesus, he can take care of all those. He can help you with whatever you're going through. Yeah, I wish I could tell you that I could help everybody in this room with every problem that you're going through. I can't. But Jesus Christ can. He can help you with everything. And so I praise the Lord for it. I'm glad he said, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. I'll say this and we'll pray. There are times that I go through struggles and burdens in my life that I can't even tell to my wife. There's not many things that I don't tell my wife, but there are times that I go through personal battles that she doesn't even know that I'm going through. You say, well, who do you tell? I tell the Lord. Amen. Because he's the one that can help me with them. And uh, I'm glad that he's there that we can call on him. Amen. Well, how many of you had a good nap today? Amen. Amen. How many of you had a big lunch on top, or had a big lunch and then a big nap in that order? Amen. Well, good. I'm glad. Maybe some of you stay awake tonight. You got your sleep in uh, either during the preaching this morning or you got it this afternoon. So maybe you'll stay awake tonight. Amen. And so let's pray. We're asking the Lord to meet with us. Father, thank you for the day. Thank you for the beautiful sunshine. Thank you for. We have so many things to thank you for. Lord, thank you most of all for just loving us. Thank you for dying for us. Thank you for uh, taking care of us. Even when we're not aware that we need to even be taken care of, you've taken care of us. Father, tonight, uh, I pray, God, that you would use us. Thank you for our choir. Thank you for the members who work and practice. Lord, thank you for those who are running the systems tonight, whether it be the PA, uh, the the screens, whatever it is. People are working all over this place, even today. I'm thankful for it. I don't don't want to ever take it for granted, Lord. But tonight, uh, the most work that needs to be done is the work that you'll do. And I pray, God, that you'd work in our hearts, that you'd work in our lives. Please fill us with your power. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, 345 in your hymn books, please. 345, bottom of the page there. Where could I go? Everyone standing. Everyone singing out. Give the Lord your best in song tonight. Don't miss the message in the song now. Sing it together. Living below in this so sinful world, hardly a comfort can afford. Striving alone to face temptation so.
can be seated. All right, let me give you some names quickly of some folks. Let's see, uh, Trisha Clark, uh, I mentioned Brother Larry's wife this morning. She supposed, was supposed to come home today. I'm not sure if she was able to do that or not. Just had surgery, so remember her if you would, please. Uh, Dixie Murphy, also uh, Ronnie Dry, uh, just had surgery as well, recovering from that. Pastor uh, Tony Parsons and then uh, Ashley uh, Blackman we mentioned in this morning. Uh, Brother Ray Burchett will have surgery in the morning. And so remember Brother Ray, if you would please. Uh, and then uh, let's see, uh, Zach Riddle is out tonight. Uh, been having been having some uh, toothache and so been pretty painful on him. So uh, he's heavily medicated. And so uh, pray for Zach, if you would please. And then of course I mentioned, I mentioned this morning about Danny uh, Goodman. Uh, of course, Miss Seals with us tonight. Glad to have her with us. Uh, but uh, Danny uh, is not doing well, and so uh, we really don't know um, how long it's going to be before the Lord calls him home. But he is is in the stages of, of going that way. And so uh, remember Miss Seal, and uh, of course uh, her mom as well. Uh, and then our, our family, Brother Jimmy, that's his uh, brother. And so uh, remember that situation, if you would, please. And then, of course, those uh, sorrowing, the Lucas family, Seagraves, Marlowe, and Collins family. And then, of course, we mentioned that Gabriel Reimer, uh, eight years old, has cancer. Pray for him, Steve Perry. Uh, Kelly Reed, I, I meant to mention Kelly Reed this morning. Um, the tumor that they found in his shoulder uh, was a fatty tumor, but during the body scan, they found a spot on his kidney. And so um, he, of course... Uh, as uh, kind of mixed emotions he's glad that this wasn't cancer but they wouldn't have found the spot on his uh, kidney had they not been doing a scan for his shoulder um, so uh, pray for Brother Kelly uh, it's just, just a bad situation uh, and it may, it may be something that's not cancerous he's, he's not sure yet he's waiting on, the, on that, that part of it uh, but uh, pray for Brother Wagner and then many others. Uh, we'll just mention a few of those tonight. And then uh, let's see, uh, Brother Roger, and Mr. Nita Blankenship are out of town. Brother Bill and Crystal Faust was uh, there. They were um, they were driving to Colorado. I, I guess they ended up going. Evan, where are you at? Evan, did they end up going to Colorado? Okay, so they they uh, they had to go out for work, but she was in the ER the other night because of her leg bothering her. Uh, and so remember her, if you would, please. I know that they would appreciate it. And so just a few of uh, those to mention tonight. Uh, of course, uh, Wednesday night, Brother James Miller will be preaching for us. And then... Brother Jeff Owens will be with us May 10th and 11th. I'm excited about it. Uh, you be here 7 o'clock Monday night, Tuesday night. And uh, if, you're, if you're looking to buy some good preaching sermons, some good uh, things for your library, Brother Owens, of course, always brings different things with him. And so uh, if, you, if you're here those nights, you can purchase those things. But uh, Brother Owens is a dear friend, a great blessing to us. And, uh, and they, their church is booming. They, uh, I just clicked on his Facebook page the other day. And uh, he just had to happen to catch him talking. Uh, they're needing to build a new auditorium. Their auditorium, they're out of room. And, uh, and so uh, they're, they're looking to try to rebuild at some point. When he was here last time, we had talked about that. And he, that there's a place that they were hoping to purchase. Uh, but uh, haven't heard anything on that. But remember them. And then uh, Lady Spring Banquet, May the 22nd at 5 p.m. Uh, ladies, come bring a covered dish and a drink. And, uh, of course, please sign up here at the front if you are going to attend. And then a graduation celebration will be held for Jenna Rats and Chandler Sneed on May 30th after the evening service. And so, once again, if everybody will bring enough food for your family and canned drinks, uh, we'll celebrate these folks as they are going to be graduating and moving on to better things. Amen? And so, remember them. And so, of course, we mentioned the birthdays this morning. We had Natalie's wrong. It's the 18th. Is that right, Natalie? Please forgive us. Please don't hate us. We'll try to get it right next time, okay? And so she's like, quit talking to me right now. <laughs> she had that look like you're embarrassing me. But May 18th is her birthday. And so, of course, the other ones. And so I appreciate all you folks. I hope you have a happy birthday. And uh, let's read this. That two students were discussing why one got expelled. Well, the one explained the teacher was teaching we came from monkeys, and I laughed. He pointed at me and said, at the end of this ruler is an unbelieving idiot. The other looked confused. How could you get that? Ex how could you get? How could that get you expelled? He replied, "That didn't. It was when I asked at which end." So, I can tell you which end it is. And so, uh, but uh, boy, I tell you what, people have. We we're talking about faith this morning. People got to have a lot of faith in what they believe. If you, you uh, people talk about different things in the Bible that didn't happen. Uh, if God said it happened, it happened. If, uh, when when uh, Pharaoh and his army. They went chasing after Moses and the children of Israel. Some people say, well, uh, uh, that was just ankle-deep water. Well, it takes more faith to believe that if they all drown in ankle-deep water. 
uh, when, when God said the waters parted, they parted. Uh, I don't know, Brother Miller. Maybe in heaven there's a big IMAX theater. I don't know. Maybe we can watch it 3D, 5D. I don't know. I hope somewhere we can hit a button and watch some of those things that took place. Maybe we'll already know about them in our mind. I don't know. But uh, I'd like to just sit down with a bowl of popcorn and watch some of those. Amen? And uh, you say, Preacher, you're messed up. I know. I can't help it. It's just the way I think. And so, But uh, I'm glad you're here. Are you glad you're saved? Yes. Amen. All right. Choir, come sing for us.
comes down 330 in your handbook please 330 bottom of the page there I need thee every hour everyone standing fellowship just a moment 330 bottom of the page every hour on 3.30, bottom of the page there, singing together, we'll sing the first and the last. I need thee every hour, most gracious Lord, no tender voice like thine can be. I 
May, let me add two more prayer requests to the list real quick. Uh, Miss Jessica was just telling me a uh, baby that was born last night, Mason Plummer, little girl, preemie, is in the hospital. If you would remember that little baby. And then also Abigail Wagner, uh, she is about a month early, I think, uh, went to the hospital yesterday or last night. And so if you would remember both of those, uh, those folks as they're trying to, uh, the parents as they're trying to deal with the, their babies being in the hospital, and of course the, the, the babies themselves. And so remember those if you would, please. All right, Brother Steve, you get ready to come sing. I told him, I said, I want you to sing that song again that you sang tonight, or that you sang this morning. I want you to sing it tonight. And so we're going to let them, we're going to let him sing that during the offertory. If you were not able to give your tithes and offerings, we're going to give you a chance to do that. Uh, Brother Chandler, if you would, would you say the prayer for us, please? Lord, thank you for just allowing us to be back in your house, Lord. Our patrons bless us, Lord, and help us. Lord, I want to thank you for giving us the energy to be able to work, Lord. And I pray you just bless us a little bit that we give back to you, Lord, and bless offering. In your holy, wonderful name we pray. Amen. 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 By faith, someone tills the land. By faith, by faith, the seed is scattered round on the broken ground. Then comes the rain, the hot and burning sun. The wind, the night, the course it all must run. And then at last, the harvest time is come, and the victory is won. It is by faith we cross the river wide. It is by faith. Stand by his dear side, by faith in him who bled and died, in Christ we're justified by faith. By faith in Christ God is appeased. But without faith, it's impossible to please. By faith, man with a heart believes, as Jesus he receives. It is by faith we cross the river wide. It is by faith we stand by his dear side, by faith in him who bled and died, in Christ we're justified by faith. Good night. I can't take it. I, I can't. I, I'm telling you, uh, he was singing that this morning. I thought I was going to have a heart attack. Yeah. Don't do that. Yeah, don't do that. There are those songs that just stir you so spiritually. You know, it don't do anything for my flesh, but it stirs my heart to do that which God wants us to do. 
Brother Steve, I appreciate you singing that song for us again tonight. I told him, I told him for church, I said, I want you to sing it again. He said, tonight? When he gets excited, his voice goes up an octave. I said, yeah, don't sing it like that either. So, but I appreciate it. Well, why don't you turn in your Bibles, Matthew chapter number 7, and Matthew chapter number 25, if you would please. Matthew chapter number 7, Matthew chapter number 25, and uh, Brother Randy, those are in the New Testament. I was going to help you. Matthew chapter number 7 and Matthew chapter number 25. Matthew chapter 7, Matthew chapter number 25. When you find that, if you're willing and able, let's stand out of reverence for the reading of God's word, please. Let's start in Matthew 7, look in verse number 24. The Bible says, Therefore... Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. If you would, turn over to Matthew chapter 25, verse number 1. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps, and the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell, and buy for, them, buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgin, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for, you, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. The title of the sermon tonight is this, Distinguishing the Foolish from the Wise. Amen. Distinguishing the Foolish from the Wise. I would say this, there are probably... Two groups of people in the world today. Well, I know there are not probably. There are. There are. There's a group of people that are saved. There's a group of people that are lost. Amen. Those who are saved, they're very wise. Amen. They put their faith in the one that they needed to. Uh, there are some who have purposely rejected Jesus Christ. Right. I, I'm not talking about they haven't heard it or they have not had somebody share it with them they've heard the good news of Jesus Christ and they have not taken what God has said as a free gift Amen. that my friend is a very foolish person Amen. let me say this tonight I believe this there's two groups of people in this church Amen. now I believe tonight that probably the majority of the people in this room are saved tonight Amen. but I, I pose the question to us are we part of the wise or are we part of the foolish I want you to think about that question. We're going to preach the sermon tonight, distinguishing the foolish from the wise. We're going to pray and we'll have a special. Father, thank you for the day. Thank you for the song that was just sung. Thank you for the song that's just about to be sung. Father, I'm grateful that we have musicians that can play and music, uh, folks that can sing and uh, folks that help in different areas of ministry. Thank you for blessing our church. Father, tonight I stand in need of your help. I am just a vessel that needs to be filled with you, God. I pray that you would help us. I pray, God, that you would use us. I pray that you would fill us with your power and your spirit. Lord, we need your help and your touch. In Jesus' name, amen. There's a city that looks o'er the valley of death and its story been told where the land is the light in the midst of the night in that beautiful city of gold where the sun, where the sun never sets
saints, they will never grow old. How I long for that city where there never comes a night in that beautiful city of gold, where the sun never sets. Thank you for the song. I appreciate it. Matthew chapter number 7. We're going to look back there. If you look there from verse 15 down to verse 23, the Lord is speaking. Of course, we know the Word of God is, uh, the Bible is the Word of God. But in these particular words, Jesus is speaking. In verse number 15, He says, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Then he says, Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or, or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth, good, uh, cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that, is, that it bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their free, fruits ye shall know them. Now, let me explain to you that the Lord is talking to those who claim the name of Christ. He says, if you claim the name of Christ, you say you're a Christian, you say that you're a follower of me, that I belong to you and you belong to me, then there ought, ought to be some fruit. Amen. There ought to be fruit. And by the way, uh, he says there, a corrupt tree is not going to produce good fruit. And a good tree is not going to pr produce corrupt fruit. In other words, there's a, there's a separation in the fruit that a person, uh, if they belong to Christ, it ought to be different than that which one does not. Now in verse number 21, it says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Now, he is referring to those who, will stay, who are standing before God, and they're saying, I belong to you, God. Uh, you know me. Uh, I did this, and I did that. And God says, I don't know you. In other words, your name is not written in the Lamb's book of life. Uh, you don't, you're not going to heaven. You're, you're, you're going to be, you're going to be uh, on the outside of heaven uh, wanting to get in, but you're not going in because you're going to hell. He says there uh, that people will say, Lord, we have prophesied in thy name. Uh, back in verse 15, he was talking about people that ran on prophesying, but they're not, they're not saved, uh, Holy Spirit-filled people. Now, it says there, therefore whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon the rock. You know the story. Now, that is referring to one who is a Christian and they build their life, I believe, on the principles of God. Let me ask you tonight, what are you building your life on? Is Hollywood your principles for how you live? If, if Hollywood is your standard for how you live, my friend, you are gonna, you're going to fail as a Christian. They are totally opposite of what God has asked us to be. And by the way, just because, just because some filthy living, wild living Hollywood movie star plays in some movie about Jesus, that doesn't mean they're saved and going to heaven. Oh, well, they played Jesus. I don't care. That don't mean they're saved. That doesn't mean they're a believer. That don't mean they put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Hey, they're after that right there. They're building their life on money. Now, in Matthew chapter number 25, you'll find there, it's talking about now when the Lord is coming back. 
It says there, there are ten virgins, they've taken their lamp. Five have wisely brought extra oil. What in the Bible does oil represent? The Holy Spirit. So here, five of the, the five of these virgins have they, they said, you know what, I've prepared uh, uh, the, the, the bridegroom's coming. And you know what? I don't want to miss it. I want to be right there when the doors open up. I'm going to be ready to go in. And so they said, you know what? They thought ahead. They said, you know, we're going to bring some extra oil with us. Uh, But there were five who were foolish. And they're sitting there. They let their lamps burn all night, burns all the oil out of their lamps. And they said, hey, why don't you spare us some oil? And they said, nuh-uh. We're waiting on the bridegroom to come, and we don't want to miss it. They said, why don't you go out and buy you some and, or, or do something to be able to earn some, and when you get back, maybe you'll be able to come in. And then it says there that while they were gone, the bridegroom came. And then, the, so the five go in with the bridegroom. The five are left outside the door. And then look at it there. He says, verily, verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. He said, you know what? Uh, I told you that I was coming, and you should have been ready, but you were not. Now, let me tell you something. Uh, We tonight need to make sure that everybody we know is ready uh, to go to heaven. Uh, The the king is coming. The bridegroom's on his way to get his bride. Hey, it could be tonight. It could be tomorrow. I don't know when, but he's on his way. But let me say to you tonight, there are folks that are not wise and they're foolish. And they're not doing what the the, the bridegroom has asked them to do. The Bible says, if man enter into heaven any other way, he's a thief and a robber. I don't know about you, but I I don't befriend robbers and thieves. No, I... I, I will uh, I will not welcome them into my home. There are going to be those who say, we're part of God's team. We picked up the Bible and carried it to church. We're on his team. I got news for you. There's, there's people who carry the Bible. They never crack open their Bible one time all week long. It's in their car. It's, it's, it's somewhere else. They don't know where it's at. Uh, look, oh, I carried my Bible. That means I'm on God's team. Hey, just because you put on a uniform don't mean you're playing for the team. Hey, when, I, when, I was, when, uh, when the Chicago Bulls were at their peak, uh, boy, I was one of my favorite teams. Michael Jordan, like him or hate him, one of the best players that ever played. I loved, I, I, I had basketball cards. I collected all kind of cards from the Bulls. and I mean, boy, they were my favorite team. Hey, I even had a Bulls jersey. And I would put my bull jersey on and go out and play in the backyard and pretend that I was on the bulls. I got news for you. Just because I put the jersey on doesn't mean I was going to the bulls to play. Let me, let me explain to you tonight. Uh, something has to take place in the heart of a human being for them to be part of the team. Uh, they got to re- receive that which is Jesus Christ, as Brother Steve sang about a while ago. Uh, by faith, receiving that gift. Uh, let me tell you tonight, if the Lord were to come back, there are people all over the world tonight. They're saying, hey, we're okay. We're ready to go. You'll, you ask them, are you sure if you die today, you know you're going to heaven? Oh, yeah, I've been baptized. That ain't what I ask you. That's not what I ask you. Hey, uh, you take a shower every day. That ain't going to take you to heaven either. Well, I go to the church house. Well, I think you ought to go to church. But if that's, if that's what you're depending on to get you to heaven, my friend, hey, you're in trouble. It's Jesus, of course, that makes those things possible. Now, I don't want to so much deal with the, the lost, but I would like to deal with the saved. The word foolish is a 14th century word that comes from fool, a person who's unwise. The Latin root folish means bellows or leather bag. The silly person meaning comes from the figurative idea of a windbag. In other words, somebody flapping their jaws, but there's no substance to it at all. They talk a good talk, but there's nothing to back it up. Uh, you know, we're not interested in what you can talk. We're interested in what you can walk. There's a difference. There's a lot of people that can talk. In fact, I've met some of them out so winning. Brother Mark, they won't attend church. They, they don't, I mean, you couldn't get them to church if you promised them a new car. But boy, they will talk about the Bible. 
Boy, they will, they will, oh, Brother Miller, they will give you a lecture on something out of the Word of God, but you wouldn't find them in a, in a house of God anywhere within a hundred mile radius. Hey, you, you, know what I, you know what I say? You're a windbag. I don't want to hear what you know. Let me see what you're going to put out. Yeah, you know, somebody can say, I want to serve God. 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 You know what? Can I say this and, be, and not be a jerk? Shut up and go serve God. I, I want to serve God. Well, go serve God. Hey, uh, preachers, oh, I want to serve God. I want to preach. Hey, there's all kind of places that people need to preach. Don't talk about it. Do it. The word foolish means this, void of understanding or sound judgment, weak in intellect, applied to general character. But in Scripture, it means wicked, sinful, acting without regard to the divine law and glory or to one's own eternal happiness. People can backslide on God and go into the throes of sin. There are people tonight, Brother Mark, they are, they, they are as far away from God as they possibly could be, and their name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I believe that. But I will tell you this, they're not happy Christians. They're not joyful Christians. They don't, they don't, they don't have the peace that passeth all understanding. You know why? They've wandered away from their Savior. I'm not much interested in what people can tell me. I'm much interested in what they can show me. Whether it be working physically or whether it be serving God, it doesn't matter to me. Yeah, I, I, I want people, uh, I want people, they say, well, preacher, uh, I, love, I love our church. If you love our church, then you'll be here. That's how I feel about it. You say, I think you're a jerk. <laughs> well, I, I don't, I'm not trying to be one, but I think if you love the church, you'll show up for it. You know, I tell my Sunday school class, folks, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for coming. You know what? They've never not come to class. They've never come to class and I not be there. Because I could tell them all day, I love you, but I don't show up. Well, you really love us, do you? Let me give you some sayings about fools and foolishness. Trickery and treachery are the practices of fools that have not the wits enough to be honest. A fool thinks himself to be wise. But a wise man knows himself to be a fool. The heart of a fool is in his mouth, but the mouth of the wise man is in his heart. When I read some of the rules for speaking and writing the English language correctly, I think any fool can make a rule and every fool will mind it. Can I say this without being mean? I think of the Democrats when I read that statement. I shouldn't have said that. That's not right. That's, but I do think about them. Listen to this, we are taxed twice as much by our idleness, three times as much by our pride, and four times as much by our foolishness. The person who writes for fools is always sure of a large audience. All of us who have children, think about this. A mother takes 20 years to make a man of her boy, and another woman makes a fool of him in 20 minutes. Brother Miller, that's a deep statement right there. We can rear our children for God, but yet there'll come a time when they've got to make the choice for themselves. I was just talking to somebody before church. I can name you two powerful, God-filled men of God. Both of those men, none of their children except for one child out of all the children they have is serving God. You say, preacher, that, th those men must, must not be filled with, with God. Let me explain something to you. If, if the devil can't get the man of God, he's going to go after his family. He's going to go after his children. You know why? Because the devil feels that if he can destroy the children, then people can't have confidence in the one preaching the word of God. Let me explain something to you. Uh, every young person in this room, uh, all you girls and all you boys, you're going to come to a point you're going to have to make decisions in your life. Now, if you're at home right now, your parents are going to help you with that. But there's going to come a time when you're going to make decisions on your own. I would like to say there are some things I think that would distinguish the foolish from the wise. Number one, I believe this personal heeding, hearing, and honoring God's word will distinguish the fool from the wise. In Matthew 7, 24, therefore, whosoever heareth 
these sayings of mine and doeth them. Brother Mark, there's a lot of folks that can quote scripture. They could they quote you off. I mean, you, I, could, I could have people, I could go out in the world and I could have some people say, hey, quote me a, a, a passage of scripture. Somebody, everybody can quote John 3, 16. Just because you can quote a verse of scripture does not mean you're heeding to the word of God. Hey, listen, uh, it, it says there, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon the rock. What God was saying was there's a man that is building his life on something that is fundamental or, or uh, stable, not those things which are unstable. You know, the Bible says that when we stand before God, that our works, that some will be wood, hay, and stubble. They're going to be burned up. They're not worth anything. But then there's going to be those things that were for God and they will stand and they will last in eternity. But let me ask you tonight, are we personally heeding? That means paying attention. Hearing and honoring God's word. You say, I only do what the preacher says. Listen, you ought to be reading your Bible. You ought to be studying your Bible away from church. I don't, it doesn't matter to me how you do it. You've got to be taking the Bible in somehow. My wife, she has a thing on her phone where somebody will read the scripture to her. I cannot tell you how many times I've walked in or in the morning I've come in and I've heard my wife and she's listening to the Bible on her phone and the Bible and, and the way they do it, I mean, they do these voice things on there. I mean, it's like, it's the real deal. I'm like, when I read my Bible, it doesn't sound like that. Time, I, I, just, I just don't know how to take it in. You've got to figure out how to get it in there. But you got, I, I believe this, uh, if you make a decision to heed the word of God and hear the word of God and honor the word of God, God will help you with it. You see, I don't have much education. You know what? There are folks who couldn't read and write, and they learn to read by reading the word of God. It's amazing to me. We can read what we want to read. We'll figure out how to, a, a way to learn it. The Bible says in Matthew 13, 10, Then the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but, but to them it is not given. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away, even that he hath. Therefore speak out of them in parables, because they seeing, see not. And hearing, they hear not, neither do they understand. You know, the, that, the, he's talking to the hard, hard, hard-hearted, uh, unbelieving children of Israel. He said, those who believe, when I give it to them, they get more in abundance. But those who do not heed and do not listen to it, then I take away what little bit they have. I ask you tonight, are you foolish or are you wise? Do you believe the word of God? Do you try to live the word of God? Do you try to take in the word of God? If you are, then I would say you're a wise person. Number two, I see that there's preparation. In Matthew 25, 2, and five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. You know, there were some folks that had enough sense to be prepared for what needed to take place. I don't know about you, but I despise being unprepared. From the time, I've been on staff at this church for 20 years. For 20 years, I have been probably just about, for those 20 years, I've probably been to church an hour early every service. I hate coming in last minute. Say, are you pointing me out? I'm just saying I hate being late. Me coming in when the when Brother Mark is about to lead the choir, that is unprepared. I'm not talking about folks that have sicknesses. We've got folks in, in this room tonight, they have health problems. I'm not talking about that. To me, if I'm going to a ball game, I'm going to get there early. I'm going to get the best seats, Brother Burrell. Somebody come in tonight, I said, come on in, we're not charging any admission tonight, it's free. Now, you say, why, why would coming early prepare me? 
well, I would, I would believe this, that, that your heart is set on, hey, something's going to happen tonight at the house of God. I come looking for something tonight. I hope you did. Uh, you know, I believe uh, those that go in with the bridegroom, they, they prepared early. You say, what did they do? They got saved. They prepared. They, they, they did what they needed to do. Uh, there are going to be those, just like when Noah built the ark, those folks did not believe, and they laughed. For 120 years, he built the ark. But hold on a second. When the rain started falling, Brother Randy, there was folks knocking on the door saying, let us in, let us in. Guess what? They did not get prepared. They did not get prepared. You know, you ought to be prepared for your service. I've got a preacher, older preacher friend. I love him to death. You just have to know him. He said to me, you don't have to have a degree to preach the word of God. I said, you're right. I agree with that. There's nowhere in the scripture where it says I've got to have a degree hanging on my wall to be a preacher. God is one that calls you, called, calls us to preach. But I said this, I said, I sure want to be as prepared as, as much as possible when the time comes. Young men, God is calling you into the ministry. Let me, let me say this, prepare now. Prepare now. You know, there will be a time when there's a famine. All in the Old Testament, there were, there were famines. We've been talking about Joseph. What did they do? They prepared early, didn't they? They got things ready. You know, uh, you, you got to prepare. You got to be ready for service. Uh, uh, you say, I want to be a good husband. Okay, prepare now. You say, I'm not married. Uh, you know, you ought to get a good work ethic, work ethic now. Work now. You know, I've got three girls. Some some days, some some dog eared looking boys are going hanging around wanting to date my daughter. My oldest girl is about to start driver's ed, and I'm not I'm de- I'm not dealing well with it. I'm not. Leah, you just have to forgive me. I'm struggling with you growing up. I'm not Jason Kendrick bad, but I'm getting there. You know, I've watched my wife teach my girls how to cook. Say they're 13, they're 14 and 11 and 7. Guess what? They're not staying 14, 11 and 7 forever. Someday, God is going to allow them to marry a man. They're going to need to know how to take care of the home. What does the Bible say? Let the older women teach the younger women. Some of you young gals, you ought to get up with some of these older ladies and say, tell me how you do it. Miss Miller, how'd you raise seven kids? She had a shotgun, that's how. Praise the Lord. Miss Walters, how'd, how'd you make it all those years in your marriage? You know, there ought to be some older, wiser men teaching the younger men as they come along. Prepare. Let me say this, number three. I see... There should be a personal attention to our walk. In Ephesians 5.11, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret, but all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light, for whatsoever does make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. The word circumspectly... Uh, the, in the in the uh, uh, Greek is ac- akrobose, that meaning carefully, diligently, or accurately. That's where we get our word accurate from. You know, we're all walking a path. I have family that is not walking the same path that I'm walking. God loves them, and I'll treat them with respect. But when it comes to my family, I have to go a different path. Brother Miller and I were talking one day, and he was talking about as his kids grew up, they were growing up through the years, how family would, would uh, you know, basically tell you you're sheltering your children, and uh, you, 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 boy, you're just being too rough on them. I look at their children, and I say, I, I, I'll go the way the Bible says. And I don't mean that arrogantly. I really, I don't. If it sounds arrogantly, I don't mean it. Listen, my children may not, they may walk away from this church and never serve God again. 
But that doesn't, that doesn't mean that I'm not supposed to keep them on the right path until they leave my home. But if I'm going to keep them on the right path, then guess what? Dad and mom have got to stay on the right path. How can I rear my children to walk the right path if I'm not walking the right path? How, how, can I, how can I tell my children, girls, I want you to be spiritual? How can I tell my girls, I want you to love God with all your heart? How can I tell them that if, if dad doesn't do that? How can, I do, how can we do that if mom doesn't do that? Let me tell you something. Uh, we're not perfect people. We're not, we're not the best Christians in this church. But let me tell you something. The thing that we try to do with our children is be real. Amen. Be real. Just stay the course. Be steadfast, unmovable. Uh, why? Because I believe this, following God's way is a whole lot better than ever following the world's way. We've got to have a personal attention to our walk. Let me say this, number four. Uh, we're just trying to dis- distinguish between the foolish and the wise. Number four, what about a personal use of time? The Bible says redeeming the time because the days are evil. That word redeeming in the Greek is exagorazo. Ex- it means this. It, it's in a, it's the sense of buying. I think of Hezekiah when I read that. Hezekiah was on his deathbed. He started praying, and before the man of God got out of the out of the courthouse, he sent uh, the courtroom. He sent him back in to say, "God's going to give you fifteen years." If you or I were to get sick tonight, would we be able to with a the right kind of heart asked God to give us more time. Could we say, Lord, I have served you, or Lord, I am serving you. Lord, if you would grant my request, would you give me some more time to live? In Ecclesiastes 9, 10, it said, Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might, for there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave, whither thou goest. When you're in the casket, it's too late to serve God. When, you, when people are walking by, putting flowers on your grave, it's too late to witness to somebody. When, when, it, when, when, when you're in the ground, uh, when they're, they're weeping over us, it's too late to try to be a servant for God. The days are only going to get more evil. In Romans 13, 11, in that, Knowing the time that now it is high time to wake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. In other words, it's not going to be long. The Lord's coming back to get his bride. Colossians 4, 5. Walk in wisdom toward, toward them that are without. Redeeming the time. Have you, ever, have you ever been working and you get sidetracked? And the next thing you know. You've done lost an hour. How many of you are going to be honest and admit that you got you, you had work to do? You started messing on your phone, and before you know it, an hour or something went by. I'm guilty. Yeah, we only have. The Bible says we're promised what three score and ten. What are you going to do with your time? I'm not saying every every person is going to be a preacher or a, a Sunday school teacher. There are there are people that they're going to be just the lay people, and I don't I hate to say just they're going to be the lay people of the church. You're going to be the ones that carry the burden of the church. You show up, you do what you're supposed to do. You give, you you love the Lord, you rear your children here, you back your pastor, all those things, and you're doing what God has called you to do. It says, walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Would you agree with me that the clock is running out on this old wicked world? You say, preacher, you're constantly pushing me, and you're constantly driving, you're constantly telling, Let's, we got to do this, and we got to do that. You know why? Because we don't have much time. We, we don't have much time. We've got to do what we've got to do while we have time to do it. See, the foolish say, I have plenty of time. When I was in school, they would, they would tell us, now, you're going, to have an, you're going to have an exam. They might would tell us two weeks out, you're going to have an exam. And I would think, 
okay, I'm going to have an exam in two weeks. You say, well, you surely started studying as soon as you got home. No, I waited the night before the exam. <laughs> Trying to cram it all in. You say, what's that? That's called being foolish. When I was in Bible college, my last year, I graduated. They said, I think we had paper for every class. Had to write papers. Praise the Lord. They said, if we wrote the paper that our wives could tithe them for us, what a blessing that was. I would write my papers out. My wife would type them up. I'd have them all ready. I'm almost positive I turned every paper in early. If not early, it, it, was, not, it was not the deadline. I, I'd have it done. I'd have my wife type it up. I'd have it presented out. You know what? Uh, because that was something that needed to be done. You know, we, we need to be soul winners. It's not, well, maybe I will. No, we need to be. We need to be using our time. Let me say this. We're trying to, we're trying to distinguish between the wise and the foolish. Let me ask you this. What about your personal investment with your finances? Before I read the scripture, was it Sunday night that Brother Roberts was here? Wednesday night, Sunday night, Brother Roberts came, and I was sitting there, I was listening to him preach, and Brother Roger had asked me, he had asked me before the service, he said, Preacher, do I need to get a check for to give Brother Roberts? And I said, no, you know, I don't think I'm going to give him anything. I said, he's just come to, to, to tell us how great we are for investing in him, and uh, uh, tell us thank you for investing in me. I said, no, you know, I said, I, I don't think we're going to need a check. I was sitting in my chair right there, and God spoke to my heart and said, you ought to give him something. I went to Brother Roger as soon as church was over. I said, go to the house, get a check. We're going to give him, I think we gave him $200. What I didn't know, that one man walked up to him and gave him some money. And then another man came to me while I was standing back and handed me, I think it might have been a $100 bill, and said, I want you to give this to the missionary. You say, what is that? I call that personal investment. The Bible says in Luke 12, 16, And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have room where to, I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, This will I do. I'll pull down my barns, I'll build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I'll say to my soul, Soul, thou hast uh, much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night shall thy soul be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Let me, let me have you understand something. I'm not against you having a nice home. I'm not against you having nice cars. I'm glad you wear nice clothes to church. I'm grateful for that. I'm glad you do that. But do you invest... In God's work, personally at all. Number one, tithing. I know it's a command, but it's investing in the Word of God. It's investing in the work of God. Giving to missions. Do you give to missions at all? You say, "Oh, all you there? There you go again, asking for money." I don't want your money. God does. I think we're going to be shocked when we get to heaven. You know, the, the, the little widow that gave her two mites, they were, they were kind of pushing her out of the way and kind of laughing at her. Could it be that when we get to heaven, there's going to be some big money folks are going to have to step aside? So some little widow gave what, what she could give. You say, what is that? That's investing in the work of God. You can check my record anytime. You can go to Miss Donna anytime. You can you can have her pull up my tithing record. You can have her pull up my mission giving. I, I support our mission program here. I support the Ron Middleton personally. You can look at it. I don't care. You know, number one, I want to be an example for our folks. But number two, I want to be a personal investor in the work of God. 
you going to lay up all these things? You're going you're gonna to say, boy, we're going to live it up now. In this story, God said, you're a fool to that man. Ladies, can I give you a bit of advice? Don't get angry at me. Don't drive your husband into deep debt because you feel like you've got to have the biggest house on the block. I'm going to tell you why a lot of marriages have exploded. Because there's a wife that's not satisfied with anything or there's a man that's not satisfied with anything. You always got to have bigger and you all got to always have better. I'm not, I'm not against those things, but let me tell you something. We, we've got, we're, we're, our churches, we've got people in our churches that are absolutely drowning in debt and they cannot physically give because they're, they're dying in their debt. You say, preacher, what's your goal? My goal is to get out of debt. That's what I'm shooting for. I'm 40 years old. I'd like, I'd like to be out of debt within the next 15 to 20 years. If Brother Brian wins the lottery and gives me some, it'll be quicker than that. I'm not opposed to us having toys. We, I have toys. You, you, there's nothing wrong with those things. But I believe this, sometimes our toys become our God. I feel awful alone right now. I think the wise man says, I'll invest in the work of God. I think I told you this, I'm going to tell you again. Somebody came up to me Wednesday night and said, Preacher, we, we just had one of our buses break down $1,500. Somebody, a husband and wife, come to me and said, Preacher, we're going to pay the $1,500 to get that bus fixed. You say, what is that? They said to me, we want those bus kids to keep coming. They sent $1,500 through our PayPal account to pay for that bus. Another person said to me, Preacher, I'm going to give $1,000 toward the other bus. You say, are you trying to raise money for it? I'm not trying to raise money for anything. I'm saying there's a personal investing that goes on. Let me say this, number six, and we're done. What about the placement of trust? Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Who are you going to trust your kids with? I'm not going to entrust my kids with the perverts of this world. Parents, we better know what our kids are watching on the TV, what they're watching on their iPads and what they're watching on their tablets. We better know what they're watching. You know why? Because there's some perverse people that want to draw their trust to them. The world says, follow us. I remember when I was a kid, I'd hear preachers stand up and just preach about cigarettes. Uh, you remember the old billboards? And I don't think they put them up much anymore, but they used to put the old uh, camel billboards up. Cool Joe. Was that, David, when you smoked, was that who it was, Cool Joe? Oh, it was Melissa that smoked. I'm sorry. You know, I never, I, Brother Mark, I've never seen them put on a billboard somebody who's dying from cancer from smoking. I've never seen them, when they did the Budweiser commercials, I've never seen them show a picture of somebody laying in a hospital bed eating up with cirrhosis of the liver. They'll take your money and they'll let you die. The foolish man will trust anybody. The wise man will say, let's be careful. Let's watch how we act, and let's watch, let's, let, I'm just going to tell you, I am mega protective over my wife and my daughter. <laughs> we go out soul winning, we dropped the, dropped the, the other day, 
my wife was going, she was, I don't know, she had one of the little girls with her. She said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take whoever it was. And I said, not by yourself, you're not. And I told her, I said, honey, I'm not trying to be jerk. I said, I want, you, I want somebody with you. So I sent Abby with her. Abby's the bodyguard. <laughs> we better be careful who we trust. I've told you this before. I'm going to tell you again, and it's not because that we're anything special. When we started having kids, we decided that, that the only folks that my children were going to spend the night with was their grandparents. I want you to understand something. There are good Christian young people that have been abused by so-called good Christian people. Say, they'd never do that. Heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it? I'm going to explain something to every man in this room. You, you listen to me. You better guard yourself. These young girls around here, you guard yourself around them. Be appropriate. Oh, that's so and so. I don't care if it's so and so or not. Huh. There's there's some there's some men that stood behind pulpits and preached. And they messed up. There are, there are churches tonight that are going through storms because they said, we can trust them. Ladies, if, you've got, if, you've, if there's another man in the church that's not your husband, and he's wanting to get you away and talk to you privately, I'd watch out. In fact, I would, if I were you, I would tell, I would tell your husband. <laughs> Tonight, I ask us, are we foolish or are we wise? He that lacketh wisdom, let him ask of God. There are folks who are brand new. Christians or they're, they're new Christians and all this is a learning process but let me say something to you none of us arrived we all ought to be learning brother Lee told me earlier he said I did a, a Bible quiz I think a hundred maybe a hundred questions on it or something he said I was surprised how many I got right you know Brother Lee, next year, if you take that quiz again, I hope you get more right next year than you did this year. The devil wants to destroy us all. He wants to tear us down. He wants to destroy this church. He wants to destroy your pastor. He wants to destroy you. He wants to destroy our testimony. You say, well, what do we got to do? We got to be wise. We got we to gotta, we gotta follow the Lord. We got to listen to his word. By the way, all preaching is is instruction to keep us from making foolish mistakes. Boy, have I ever made some foolish mistakes. I have an idea. You've probably made some foolish mistakes too, hadn't you? Have you ever done something and you think, why did I do that? Why, why, what would possess me to do that? If you've ever had one of those moments... I hope you say, you know what, I'm never, by the grace of an almighty God, ever do that again. Some people never learn. Brother Fred, they keep making the same mistakes over and over and over again. You say, preacher, why do you think that is? My personal opinion is this, and we're done. There's no growth in the Word of God. This book will help us be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth this fruit in its season. Let me say this and we're done. The more I get in the world, Brother Mark, the more I wither spiritually. But the closer I try to get to God, whether it be in my prayer life, whether it be in my Bible reading, whether it be in my soul winning, 
no matter what it is, Brother Miller, I have found the more that I get in this book, the more that I thrive spiritually. But when you thrive spiritually, that means the devil's coming after you. That means the battle's going to get hotter. I'm afraid there are Christians in our church. And when I say our church, I'm talking about churches all around, that the devil has no reason to bother them. They're, they're, no, they're no threat to him. They're more concerned about what they want than what God wants. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. The pianist will come. I'll ask you quickly, if you're saved tonight, you know you've been saved. Raise your hand. Preacher, I know I'm saved. You raise your hand high. You put your hand down. Let me ask you tonight, is there one tonight, preacher, I'm not saved? If I, die, if I were to die, I'm not sure I'd go to heaven. I'm not sure that, I, that I'm saved, that I'm not sure that I'm ready to meet God. Is there one tonight? I see that hand. Ma'am, would you look at me? Could I have my wife take the Bible and show you from the Word of God how to be saved? Okay. The Lord wants to save you. He wants to save you. Let me ask you this. Would you say, preacher, there's some decisions that I'm making in my life and I need the help of God. I just, I don't want to make a foolish decision. I want to be wise. Or preacher, God spoke to my heart tonight and I need some help in an area. I, 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 need some, I need some spiritual help. If that's you tonight, nobody's looking. Preacher, that's me. Would you raise your hand? God spoke to my heart. I need some help tonight. There are hands going up. We all need help. There's no doubt about it. Let's stand to our feet. Our heads are bowed. Our eyes are closed. As she plays, if you need to be saved, the Lord wants to save you. Tonight, maybe you need to make some decisions in your life. Let's be wise. Young people, be wise in your dating. Say, preacher, what do you mean? Don't put yourself in circumstances where your flesh is going to get out of control. The Bible says it's good for a man not to touch a woman. The time for a man to be touching a woman when he's married to her. You know, young people, they, they, they allow the flesh to take over and the next thing you know, they're in a mess and they, they, they with regret say, I wish I would have waited. I wish I would have kept myself pure. I wish I would have kept myself in the right place. Tonight, you can make that decision. What I say to the unmarried, I say to the married, let's keep ourselves pure. Let's keep ourselves right with God and let's keep our right, ourselves right with our mates. Let's be wise tonight. Be careful with our communication, whether it be on a cell phone or on the telephone. Be careful about those things. Be careful what we post on social media and Twitter and Facebook and all those, all those avenues. Let's be careful. People are looking. People are watching. They know you're a Christian. They know I'm a Christian. Let's be careful what we post on there. I'm trying to be wise. Ladies, it's never wise for you to post inappropriate pictures of your body on, on any kind of uh, social media at all. That's not, that's not wise at all. Man, it's not wise for us to look at it. So I can handle it. Let me tell you something. There ain't nobody can handle it. Can a man take fire in his bosom and not be burned? No, you're going to get burned, friend. You better be careful. Let's be wise. All right. Well, you can look up here. Thank you for being here tonight. Brother Mark, you're going to have choir practice. And so, uh, folks, after they count the offerings, of course, you'll be ready to practice. And let me say to our choir members, thank you for the great job you did today. Thank you for all those. Uh, I don't think, is Joshua Johnson here tonight? Brother Joshua's not here tonight, I don't think, is he? Uh, he preached junior church this morning. Brother Fred told me that he did a good job this morning. And Miss Stephanie, you tell him, I said, thank you for, for doing that. And, uh, of course, Children's Church and Bus Ministry. And I'm thankful for it all. Thank you for working. Thank you for laboring. And uh, I appreciate it. So, listen, Wednesday night, you're going to come hear the great James Miller. Is that what I was supposed to say? Was it great or fantastic?
Both. Okay. The great and fantastic James Miller. Brother James will be preaching for us on Wednesday night. And uh, this, is, this is a guy that studies and prepares, and I appreciate that. And, uh, and so we're looking forward to that. I'm glad, I'm glad we had a, a good day in the house of the Lord. Amen. Let's pray. We're going to be dismissed.